So should we just uh, wait for a couple of minutes? You have a chance to join. Yeah. So, we got ten so people ten, watching. Ten people watching. Great stuff. Uh, I think we have twenty registrants, so uh, we'll just give it a minute or two to let the rest join. Um, but welcome to everyone that's on so far. Uh, thanks for taking a, the time to join us today. Uh, we'll just give it another minute. See if we can get this up to up to twenty. <clears throat> so for those that have, uh, that have joined, we have uh, Katerina from our marketing team on the call. So if you want to ask questions, um, just put them in the, uh, the chat section um, where they get moderated and then she can uh, share them with us throughout the call and we'll have a bit of time at the end for, uh, for questions. Um, so feel free to ask away and uh, myself, probably more likely Phil will try and uh, <laughs> try and answer as many as as many as possible in the time that we have. <clears throat> we seem to be at 10. <clears throat> okay, let's go another minute. Bum, 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 bum. I'll just share my screen already. A12. <coughs> okay, guys, we'll just give it another 30 seconds or so, see if we get a few more people joining. And then we can crack on. Oh, 14, okay. <sighs> okay, I think it's three minutes past. So shall we just uh, get moving? Okay, good stuff. Right. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thanks for taking the time to, uh, to join this introduction to Teleport webinar uh, for the four people, uh, Katerina, uh, from our marketing team, who's kindly joined the call to moderate everything uh, and help us through this, uh, this session. It's uh, me and Phil's first time using this uh, platform, so hopefully it goes smoothly, but um, just bear with us and uh, hopefully it will all be, it'll all be fantastic. Um, so if you guys want to ask questions, stick them in the chat on the right hand side, I believe. And um, she's going to look through them, yeah, obviously moderate them, um, and then she can post them to uh, myself and Phil sort of later on. We'll try and sort of keep about 10 or 15 minutes towards the end of the call for live questions um, so we can do some nice interactive uh, interactive questioning. But also feel free to ask throughout the call and, um, yeah, perhaps we can stop and uh, and answer some questions as well. So, yeah, I'm just going to yeah brief briefly introduce you to, uh, to Teleport, um, discuss why it was created uh, and the challenges it solves. And then Phil, our fantastic uh, EMEA solutions engineer, will um, deliver a, a demo uh, into the different elements that make up the Teleport platform. And then at the end, we can answer some questions. Uh, so first of all, really, yeah, so to describe Teleport, Teleport really is a, a, a rare security solution in that it actually makes, um, makes it far faster for engineers to do their jobs while increasing security levels um, at the same time in parallel. Um, likely, you know, helping to make your organization far more secure than it currently is now. So nearly all organizations that we speak to, and we, uh, we speak to a lot, um, have implemented security solutions that developers didn't really adopt and don't particularly like and don't particularly find easy to use. Um, this is one of the main sort of pain points that we, uh, that we see. Um, and the reason for that being that, you know, they're a pain to use. Um, developers are generally super smart and they're generally super um, smart enough to, to kind of get around them. 
Um, so if you really want someone, especially your DevOps teams, to, to adopt a security solution, it really has to be a super simple tool. Uh, and that's what Teleport has done with identity native infrastructure access. So let's uh, let's take a look at it. So without Teleport, um, engineers mu must access infrastructure using uh, an insecure and cumbersome siloed mix of you know VPNs, bastion hosts, jump host, legacy PAM solutions, all the tools that, that most companies currently use, um, each with its own access control uh, and audit layer. So visibility can you know be pretty minimal, uh, and the risk of an error is uh, is high. Controlling permissions for services connected to your infrastructure just becomes very, very complex uh, and very siloed. And so with Teleport, every uh, connection across your global infrastructure passes through Teleport's identity-aware access proxy, where it's authenticated and authorized based on human or machine identity. Uh, and because engineers uh, and services are treated the same, you get complete visibility and control over every uh, connection without managing different access control systems making life super easy for you. And because Teleport bases authentication on identity instead of static credentials like SSH keys, passwords, it's far more secure, it's more cost effective to scale, and it's far more easy to use. So let's have a look at the solution itself. So the solution is identity native access for infrastructure, and identity native is comprised of two things, secretless and zero trust. Secretless uh, basically means taking a number of attack vectors off the board. So there are no passwords to be stolen or fished. Uh, no legacy PAM systems or vault keys to, to, to manage, making your life easier. Uh, less systems for DevOps to basically fight and uh, have to get through each time they want to access a piece of your uh, company's infrastructure. And the second component of identity native is zero trust. Uh, and zero trust completely throws out the idea of a corporate network with all access between humans uh, and machines being used based on identity. So the primary co component of zero trust is internet facing access proxy, that controls access between resources uh, from any locations that you have uh, throughout the world. So how does Teleport do identity native infrastructure access? Let's have a look. So we start with identity, and this is cryptogra cryptographically validated, got a tongue twister there, uh, um, identity for, for everything. So that's DevOps, um, developers, machines, uh, applications, databases, whatever. There are no passwords or secrets uh, in sight. Teleport was born identity native from day one. So we have never used passwords and we've never used any credentials of, of any kind. Um, a lot of organizations, uh, you know, we're trying to make these kind of legacy access management solutions. Many of our competitors, um, yeah, I won't name any names, but you know, they're trying to make them in a, in a modern cloud infrastructure world. And it's just, uh, it's just not working. So these vendors are identity washing, um, their solutions to fit with these modern infrastructures. But under the hood, it's the same old thing. Passwords, keys, shared secrets, shared credentials, zombie credentials flying around. And, you know, this is uh, causing the risk of a, of a breach. So these solutions don't do anything to improve your security. And what they do do is um, slow down your developers and engineering productivity. Um, so in addition to identity, Teleport stores your cryptographically validated identity in secure enclaves that already exist in your devices today. So... Things like uh, TPMs, uh, HSMs, Touch ID for Mac. Teleport uses these built-in security devices to protect your identity on the device itself so that it can't be stolen or tampered with. So, for example, if a device is stolen, it doesn't mean that your infrastructure is actually at risk. Teleport requires proof of presence um, in the form of per session uh, MFA so that the authorized user is the one that actually is accessing the infrastructure. Then all all connections between resources are mutually authenticated, not only from identity perspective between the device themselves, but at the network level. The Teleport uses mutual TLS for all network connects, so that connects cannot be spoofed. Prevent attacks. So why do developers and engineers love Teleport so much? And they tell us this every single day when we speak to them and uh, they want more Teleport. Um, basically, because it's the easiest way to administer access from one place. Teleport consolidates um, you know, a variety of different manual processes uh, and interfaces to provision access by resource, uh, provided giving a, a single source of truth for all your, all your access across all your infrastructure. It's um, infrastructure agnostic, so it doesn't matter if you have a hybrid infrastructure or you're migrating resources uh, between clouds. Uh, with the Teleport access platform, developers and engineers have a, a real-time inventory of their entire infrastructure in a single console making life super simple. Um, Just-in-time uh, access requests, so no need for long turnarounds to submit, you know, 
tickets to ops or um, you know tickets while remembering to close those tickets. So any requests uh, get dealt with really quickly, and then you can yeah notify the team member of their relevant or elevated access uh, really simply and uh, really quickly. And we've partnered alongside tons of other tech tools for loads of first-class uh, integrations, which allows us to be an easy part of your uh, tech ecosystem. So that's, you know, things like SSO, IDPs, Slack, Jira, you know, Microsoft Teams, Terraform, just to, just to name a few. So why do security teams love Teleport? So single source of truth, you know, Teleport consolidates multiple layers of, of um, access across all the modern tech stacks. Um, zero trust infrastructure access. So Teleport is the easiest way to implement Goncorp and zero trust architectures for modern engineering teams. All connections from uh, any engineer or uh, machine a user are uh, authenticated, authorized and audited by Teleport's identity native access proxy, which gives you full zero trust. Um, we can render phishing and pivot attacks useless. So Teleport removes the number of uh, the number of um, sources of breaches and, and greatly improves not only your organization's security posture, but the infrastructure access experience by replacing all your passwords and secrets and giving you that easy kind of biometric and hardware-based machine identity. So we also yeah, reduced auditing and compliance burdens, which are a nightmare for most of our customers. Um, so many, you know, many teleport customers operate really highly regulated and secure infrastructures that have to have that kind of constant and ongoing audit and compliance scrutiny um, and custom, customers use Teleport's identity native infrastructure solution to meet those key controls and audit burdens in a variety of uh, really, really, you know, complex and, um, you know, difficult frameworks such as FedRAMP and, and, and PCI, uh, SOC2, ISO, in EMEA, um, HIPAA, you know, SOX and, and, and all the rest. Um, so, yeah, so Teleport really is the leader and the first identity native infrastructure access platform for engineers and machines and by replacing you know insecure secrets with true identity the teleport access platform delivers that frictionless developer experience and tears down those siloed access tools with um you know phishing proof zero trust for all your engineers all your devops guys um and attacks uh, attaches to all your global infrastructure and here you go you can see some of the um the people that we're trusted by in production you know with tons of customers and throughout the world, uh, and these guys really care about DevOps moving at pace. Um, that's one of the, the, the key things. It's DevOps moving at pace while, maintain, while maintaining that, that best-in-class security posture. So Teleport is an open-source access platform that improves developer experience um, while increasing security by replacing all those VPNs and shared credentials, secrets and vaults, and legacy access uh, management technologies. Um, so that's just a, a quick sort of introduction of, uh, of Teleport and the the, the problems that we're, we're trying to solve and that we are solving. Uh, and so now what I'll do is I'll hand over to, uh, to Phil uh, and he can explain a bit more about how it works under the hood, um, show you a demo and uh, get into the, uh, into the technicals. Um, so I will stop sharing by clicking the stop sharing button. There we go, Phil, over to you. That's great, great, Alex, thank you. Great. So in, we'll get a, get into a demo and in, in, in a little bit, but I think you know, we'll just take it some time to get into a, a kind of deeper dive of what's happening under the hood in in Teleport, you know, and, and get get into that uh, the technology behind it and and the Teleport access platform. And as Alex had called out, you know, Teleport is adhering to zero trust mm -hmm. principles, and and in in that sense, what what does that mean from from a Teleport perspective? You know, we have our identity native proxy. And that's typically an, a, an internet facing proxy uh, where all of your resources are, are connecting to. So that's what's ruling out the need for VPNs and supporting any resources in any location and removing the need for any perimeter based security. And all of your resources, be it Linux SSH servers, Kubernetes clusters, databases, Windows desktops, are, are applicable applications are all connecting to that proxy over a reverse tunnel. And an important point there, again, kind of meeting that kind of zero trust requirement is that that reverse tunnel is on a single outbound port from those resources to the proxy. And so that's you know, uh, ensuring that there's no ingress required uh, on those resources. And we're essentially creating the reverse tunnel on that outbound connection or multiplexing on that outbound connection is, is the term we use 
uh, to create that reverse tunnel. And that's far more secure that you don't have any ingress on, on, those, uh, on those resources. So they're you know, private within your own infrastructure, but connecting out, out to the proxy. And that proxy itself you know, can be self-hosted in your own infrastructure, in, in your own cloud environment, or on your, in your own on-premise or your own data centers, or Teleport also offers their own cloud offering where we're hosting the proxy essentially for you and your resources are just connecting out to our cloud, cloud solution. Teleport is also infrastructure agnostic, again, meaning that any resources in any location, uh, it's, it's all the same essentially to teleport. Those resources are connecting to, to a proxy and access is centralized within that single solution, regardless of 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 where it's based, but also providing a, a consolidated role-based uh, access definition across all of your infrastructure. Now, in, in terms of that secretless uh, term that you heard from, from Alex earlier, we achieved that using short-lived and scoped certificates. And, and, and that's true, our certificate authority, that's a core, core component of, of the solution. So when users and machines too, if they're if it's a service account, log into Teleport, they're going to get a short-lived and so scoped certificate. So it's short-lived in the sense that it will live for a number of hours that you define. That could be eight hours to reflect a, a working day or reduced to a shorter time period or a couple of hours if the user is accessing a more privileged environment that, that you want tighter controls on. It's also scoped, as I said, to a job role so that users only get access to the resources that they need to, 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 to work through their working day. So it's that principle of least privilege that's within that certificate so that they're only seeing and working on resources that they, that they need to on a day-to-day -day basis. So they log in, they get that short-lived certificate, and that certificate is, and that approach can be used by both human users and a machine or service accounts using a feature in Teleport called Machine ID. Okay, um, and then in terms of user users accessing the platform, and that's what we'll see more of in in the, in, in the demo to come. For your engineers, it's very similar experience to what they're doing today, frictionless, you know, and not not shifting them away radically from any tools that they're they're using currently. So. They're going to use our web user interface or work on the command line using our TSH shell tool, but they can continue to use kubectl for Kubernetes, for example, and, and their existing database uh, GUI clients for accessing database. It's just that in the background, it's certificate-based authentication that's used as opposed to username and password or any static credentials or keys in the background. And to you know, facilitate a single source of truth. We would integrate with identity providers within organizations. So that identity provider stays as that single source of truth. That's where users are onboarded and, and offboarded. And we will sync with that identity provider and and take group management policies from that, uh, from that identity provider and map them to roles within Teleport. So users are going to get access to infrastructure based on the group management policies that you have defined within your identity provider. If you change them in that one place in the identity provider, then that's going to reflect then uh, when they next log into Teleport and they will see and have different uh, infrastructure access based on that change in that one place. Similarly, if they're off-boarded and they leave the organization, you off-board them in a single place, they're gone and they no longer have infrastructure access and you don't have to, to worry or be concerned about zombie credentials or going through quite a, a tedious process to, to remove all of their access across all of your infrastructure. Finally, in terms of compliance, Teleport supports a session recording and provides audit logging, so you have full oversight on what's happening within your, your infrastructure. You can play back those session recordings and see exactly what happened. And that that you know, is also for compliance reasons, but can also be just for day-to-day -day forensics. If, if an issue has happened, then you want to understand what change was made. If you need to roll back that change, session recordings are there for that purpose as well. 
similarly with audit logs, logging everything that's happened in terms of access yeah, within within the solution. And those audit logs can be also forwarded out to a, a log aggregation or seam solution like Splunk or Datadog or, or Elasticstack. And it's you know, within those tools that you typically see, you know, deeper reporting analysis based on that log content and potentially you know alerting based based on log content okay and finally then we have the concept of just in time access requests and these are requests for elevated privileges to access additional resources within within your infrastructure so it meant, as i mentioned before we're working on the principle of least privilege. So users have access to what they need to access on a day-to-day -day basis, but they don't have additional access to, uh, to other environments that they use on occasion and um, or that they, they've held over from previous work that they've done. So we have this workflow that we integrate with the likes of Slack, Teams, Jira, and PagerDuty, and, and other plugins can be built also where you can quickly approve requests to get elevated privileges to support an emergency situation or the fact that someone's on sick leave or or the fact or, or that you're, there's an ongoing maintenance window and users will get a time-based access to that additional resource uh, can work on that resource once that request is approved and then they'll immediately revert back to their default role definition after that time okay I'll just uh, pause and have a, a look at the Q&A and see if there's any questions I can pick up and answer at this time. Um, so Dominic had a question in relation to pass, a password management tool in Teleport. So your know, Teleport doesn't manage passwords and, uh, and won't, in a sense, that's not... Uh, how teleport works, you know, where, where we typically see passwords used will be for database access and, and potentially Windows access. But in both cases, we're replacing certificate based authentication, but specifically for you know, Windows desktops, their approach to replacing passwords is using smart card emulation. And we will see that later in, in the de demonstration. So uh, and likewise, with when you implement database access and teleport, you're moving away from the you know, a username, a common username and password, and use and enabling certificate-based authentication on those databases. Um, now, uh, Richard had a question in terms of: Will teleport have the ability to scan infrastructure and to determine which servers and database have? not been onboarded or configured to use teleport so we do have what we call auto discovery features that are being added over time that they're they're new features that are coming in so where we can uh, particularly on the the big cloud providers aws for example auto discovery of ec2 instances auto discovery of uh, rds databases auto discovery of eks databases so with with more disco discovery options to come in in gcp and, and azure as, as well down the line but yes we, we it's not so much a scan but an auto discovery is the term we would use for for that feature great um and i think we'll move on to next to a, a demonstration okay so I'll start off with the demonstration of a user accessing Teleport within the web user interface. Then we'll also kind of show you that experience from the command line and a few other options for users accessing the infrastructure. So presented with the login page in Teleport, we can see this as a representation of the proxy that users, users are accessing. And I've integrated with a number of different identity providers just as examples using you know, OIDC and, and SAML based integrations to these identity providers. And you know, there are options to, to integrate with an identity provider, but also to use local users in, in Teleport. So, you, you know, supporting username, password, and second factor authentication with the use of, you know, hardware keys and authenticator apps based, based on your choice. So logging in to Teleport, picking one of those a single sign-on options that I have, and I land on the server's dashboard. So this represents Linux servers 
uh, and we could see along the left hand side those supported protocols that we support so applications kubernetes databases and desktops and we'll step through each of those protocols as part of part of the demonstration but for now we'll focus on on linux or ssh access into into linux machines what's kind of standing out on this dashboard are a lot of labels this would be you know, analogous to tags that you would have in you know in, in in with a cloud provider you know aws has the concept of tags where you're tagging servers and we would integrate with tags in, to present those same tags within the dashboard if required so we're tagging or labeling each each server here i have a label m dev on this particular linux server so i'm defining it as a a, a development machine. And similarly, I have a test label on a, on a different server. So I'm using those labels to define what these servers are used for. And it's those labels on those resources that are then used in role definitions to decide which, that decide which users get, get to see and access which, which resources. So obviously in that dev example, resources with the dev label are going to be really mapped to a role for developers so that when developers log in, they see see the right resources. When connecting to a Linux machine, I can configure what logins a user can use. Do, you know, should the root user be restricted in, in a sense or, uh, or only be given, only certain users should be given permission to use the root, root user? Do we want to enforce that users use their own individual account, or is it okay for you know, for users to share the same kind of common account on on Linux machines? Okay, so um, we can make that choice as part of the configuration as, as to what we want users to do. So we then have an online SSH session, and. You know, within the browser, users can choose whether they want to. Uh, work within the web UI for SSH access or work in the terminal. We'll see terminal access a little bit later, but that's really a user preference for, for, for the end users. So I'll execute some commands on, on this particular session, just so we can see some activity in the session and within the audit log and session recordings. Okay. And we'll log out from that session. We can start multiple sessions in parallel also within the tab structure within the browser. Okay. And, and then close them out. Now, if I want to look at the auditing of what's happened so far in that with those sessions that I've undertaken, we can see that I've logged in as that single sign-on user and I've undertaken a number of SSH sessions. We have server session started at event, you know, tracking that first event that I opened up. I was this user Philip that opened that that session, the time I opened the session, and also the Ubuntu login that was used on that particular session. And all of this data is pure, purposely in this JSON format so that we can forward the, the content or that, that, that detailed to a, a seam or log aggregation solution. Okay. And then finally, we have the playback, which is the, the, the session recording of the session that, that you previously saw. Okay. And we've captured the raw data within that session and then formulated the playback so we have access to that raw data should I need to you know cut and paste out from from that recording you know for debugging purposes okay so we'll and that and come back to look at an additional move on from looking at Linux servers, but I see a question from Dominic there. So will Teleport be browser based only in the future or are you can seeing an application or perhaps a free BSD for server development? So at this moment in time, we have three options for, for users to use the web user interface, to use the their own 
choice of terminal uh, for command line access. And we also have our own native tool for Mac and, and Windows, which is Teleport Connect. And it's, you know, again, a graphical user interface uh, that can just be installed locally on machines as an alternative to the web user interface. Okay, But then you'll see a lot of use of you know, third-party GUI clients, particularly for Kubernetes access, where an example would be Lens, you know, for databases, you know, you see many, many diff different database GUI clients used. So long as that database GUI client supports certificate authentication, then, then it's okay, and most do. So typical use cases we'll see would be, you know, MySQL Workbench for uh, PG Admin for Postgres access, DBver, um, a, a long list. So yeah, there's a lot of options there in terms of, you know, uh, tooling and uh, applications that can be used with teleport. Now moving on to application access then, and, and we think of applications, these are internally hosted web applications. So these could be tooling, dashboards, wikis internally that you have that you're typically protecting with, with VPN. But now with Teleport, you can provide role-based access to those endpoints. And that that is ac you know, about accessing that application within the web browser, but also you know, controlling access to any API endpoints that that application exposes that could be used on the command line. So again, kind of wrapping access to that application in both ways using certificate-based uh, authentication. You know, examples of that would be Grafana or Jenkins installed in your own infrastructure where you launch into those applications from Teleport. And we've implemented a JWT integration approach where you can provide users with a seamless logon to applications so that they come into the application as, the, as they're logged in Teleport user. And again, moving those users away from username and password-based authentication within these applications. You know, looking at the URL, we see that it's Grafana gated behind it, you know, a teleport cluster. So if anybody you know bookmarks this URL, they'll be required to log into teleport uh, to get back to, to this point and also still have the appropriate role-based permissions to get back to this particular endpoint. Another example is controlling access to you know cloud provider. APIs and consoles. The example I have here is, is the AWS console. So it can allow users to assume different IAM roles within AWS. So we connect out to that console as that teleport user with that, uh, with that IAM role. So this user does not exist in, 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 within the AWS account. It's through our integration that we're allowing the teleport user to assume that IAM role. Okay. Now for Kubernetes and database, kind of next on the list, we typically see access either through the command line or through other graphical tools. So within our own web user interface, we provide information on how to connect to those uh, resources. And we'll see that in a second when I jump out to the terminal window. But the last option within the web user interface is accessing Windows desktops. And this is where we see a password, passwordless approach to Windows, Windows access, where we uh, can integrate with Active Directory and auto discover all of your Windows hosts that are connected to the domain controller or support standalone Windows machines individually connecting back to the teleport cluster. But in both cases, the experience for the user is the same. And similar to the Linux server example that I have, you're allowing or mapping different users to different usernames to access these Windows machines and have labels on these Windows machines to define, uh, to be able to then define roles that would control access to them. When we log in as one of the users, we can see that I'm bypassing the password requirement of Windows using that smart card emulation that I uh, referred to earlier in the call. Okay, so again, seamless logon for those users. And then within a Windows session, users can, or administrators can control whether clipboard can be enabled or disabled. And 
and also enable and disable directory sharing. So, you know, I can I can cut and paste here uh, from from outside of, of the session into the Windows machine because I'm that is enabled in, in this instance, as is directory sharing. So I can share from my local machine into the Windows uh, machine if I if I need to. Uh, but those options can be disabled on, on more privileged servers if you know tighter controls are required. But disconnecting from that Windows session, you know, I have a session recording of that then as well to play back and seeing exactly what's happened within that Windows session. I can speed that up a little bit. So you'll see that playback of that Windows session. Great. I'll just take a pause and have a quick look at the Q&A. I think we're, we're up up to speed. There's no additional questions, so I'll, I'll, I'll continue on. That's great. So moving out to command line access to these resources, you know, I'll log into the same cluster from the command line. Again, hitting my integration with my identity provider and now I can see that I'm now logged into the cluster on the command line, where this is the first time we see, you know, reference to the certificate val validity. So we can see based on the roles that I've been been given within the cluster, I've a certificate has been generated that will be valid for two hours. So that's the configurable time to live on certificates based on what the user is accessing. You know, quickly show you again, you know. SSH access, so I'm listing out the servers, the Linux servers that I have access to. That's the same five servers that you saw within the web user interface. Um, when I SSH into one of those servers, in you know, I, I can then just work a, as I normally would do within that Linux session. You know, moving on, you want to quickly you know, quite easily and switching between protocols, switching from SSH to D uh, databases, I can list out the databases that I have access to and can connect to one of those. So I pick in my SQL database and can now have direct command line access to that database where I can execute select commands. And that select query is going to be audited in Teleport and we'll see that in the audit log a bit later. So in terms of database access, you're controlling access to specific databases uh, and, and the user accounts that on those databases that users can use, but also then having full audit auditing of the queries that are executed within those sessions. We talked before about looking at, you know, using database uh, GUI clients. And we can see if I look at my TSH folder, this is my teleport folder locally on my machine now. I can see where my certificate files are, are living and, and, and I can use these certificate files to plug into my database GUI clients to, to use certificate-based authentication um, within those clients. And that's typically a one-time configuration within those GUI clients to, to point the connection to the, the file paths that you see here. And those file paths are reasonably, uh, um, reasonably static in that they reflect the cluster name and also the uh, um, and the user's name. So, you know, they, they don't change um, over time. Okay. Now, okay. So then next we'll move on to uh, Kubernetes access. So we list out the Kubernetes clusters that we have access to. And I can then log into one of those Kubernetes clusters. So it's from this point I can move forward with kubectl exec calls. I can execute a get pods on that particular Kubernetes cluster. You can see that I have one cluster, uh, one pod within that cluster that I that I can access. And that API call to get the pods will be audited again in the teleport audit log for the an even nicer feature in Teleport is the fact that we record kubectl exec sessions. So that gives you full oversight 
you know, of both the API calls and the kubectl exec sessions. So we can execute a few commands within the kubectl exec session, and this will be recorded and played back in the same way as you saw the SSH sessions. So full coverage there, quite a unique feature that, that Teleport has um, that you know, to give you that full oversight within Kubernetes, for Kubernetes access. Okay, and just jumping back to look at the audit log of what's happened within my time on the terminal window. I've had that additional session that, that's been recorded, that SSH session. We can see database sessions that have been started and ended and the query that's been executed uh, on that database. So we can see the specific database query that, that was executed uh, on, the, uh, on that database as part of that session. And similarly for Kubernetes, capturing the API calls that were made so we can see the get operation on the pods resource and also the session recording of the kubectl exec session. Okay, I'll pause again and look for questions. I think I might've been looking in the wrong place, but I can see that uh, a few more questions that I previously missed. So let's take a minute to kind of go through some of these. Um, um, so what would it look like, Chirozi had asked the question, what would it look like for a Windows server? Will agents be installed on these? So uh, it, as I kind of mentioned, you know, when talking about Windows desktop access, there's there's two two approaches. We can integrate with Active Directory and auto discover those Windows servers through direct integration with Active Directory. So in that case, there's no telecore process running on the, the Windows clients. All integration is with Active Directory, but where uh, a Windows uh, machine is standalone and not connected to a domain controller, then there will be a telecore process running, connecting back that, that Windows, uh, that individual Windows machine back to the telecore cluster. Um, Richard, is there any support for sale point provision access to teleport? I think that's one I'll have to come back to um, um, and look for use cases and see if, if we have if anybody has has done that. Um, I I I don't I don't see a problem, Richard, uh, but I, I don't want to say for for sure now. But it is something we can take away and come back to. You. Um, um, then was there one question? I answered Richard's next question. And do you plan password, Dominic? Uh, yeah. So I think I think I've covered all of the questions now, which is which is great. Um, oh, oh, Mercy has a question: Is teleport installed on premise or cloud or else? And you have you have a choice there in terms of teleport. It's it can be installed on premise on your own cloud. Um, or, or 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 take our cloud offering. So there's a lot of flexibility there. So you, can, you know, and deploying on the cloud, there's you know option different options to use the different storage backends within those cloud providers. For example, on AWS, using DynamoDB and S3 buckets to store your teleport configuration data and and session recordings. Uh, so how is how is password management performed and where uh, and where and how links between users? So there there uh, there is no passwords to be managed is essentially in this situation for you know where we see passwords is typically in your know, database access, but users no longer have access to passwords. We would enable certificate based authentication on databases or you know for Windows is where we would see you know. Uh, typical use of passwords, but we now provide a passwordless approach to Windows access. So users are linked to, to roles within Teleport, and then Teleport itself is then managing how how the both the databases and Windows in that in that in that sense connect to the cluster. So Teleport is managing that for you through certificate based um, uh, authentication. Okay, so now one 
One last thing to show um, is the concept of access requests. So we could quickly show you that and, and then we'll finish up with the demonstration, okay? So in terms of you know accessing Teleport for different user profiles, I'm going to log in in a different browser window now for a different user who we'll see uh, as, a, as a contractor. So a contractor that's looking would it looking to get access to resources within your infrastructure? Connor is my contractor here, this user, but he doesn't have access to any servers, applications, databases, or desktops. But what he can do is to make a request for access and be provided with a list, and that list is controlled as to what he he can access. So he's going to request access to servers. We'll proceed with that request. Say, I need access. Now, and submit that request. Okay, and I have an integration with Slack in, in, in my environment. So I can see the message that's come from Connor that he needs access now. And we can automatically you know, approve that as an approval user and give him access to, to what he needs. Okay, so this is now escalating privilege essentially so connor has temp will have temporary access to those server resources based on that approval you can see the approval message back from from myself the approver and can, you can assume assume the role and we can see in the top banner that he now has access to servers for two hours and he now has you can see and view uh, servers that he couldn't access before so we'll log into that session as Connor, execute a few commands. And another nice feature of Teleport is the concept of active sessions. So myself as the administrator can see that Connor has an active session and I can actually join that session as a peer and, and help him out with, with, with his session. And we can both see what's kind of going on within the session um, and perhaps you know, troubleshoot together. And I can also, uh, here we go, uh, contribute to that session as well. When we log out, we come back to the session recordings. We can see that there's a joint session for both Philip and Connor, and the playback will include all of the commands that are executed by both features. So, you know, another layer of oversight and, and assistance that, that can be given within Teleport with active sessions. We do have the concept of moderated sessions as well, which is enforcing that a minimum of two users are present within a session before a session begins. And that's implementing the four eyes principle. So that would ensure in that instance in a, in a you know, highly sensitive environment or privileged environment that no one works alone is, 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 is the concept there. And that's moderated sessions. Okay, so I'll finish there in terms of the, the demonstration. I, I think at this point we have covered all of the questions. Uh, Alex, any any insight from yourself? Do you think, have I covered everything? Am I, are we good, do you think? I think I had that one question that we had to take away from creating the sale <laughs> point, and we're all good. Yeah, I feel like you've covered pretty much everything. The link for... Yeah, the differences with, with CyberArk, I think we've gone through that. Um, yeah, obviously, the differences with um, credentials and uh, and uh, certificate-based. Um, what else have we not covered? Uh, have a look. Any new questions? Uh, <clears throat> I think we're... I can't see any new ones that we haven't, or well, that you haven't <laughs> covered, to be honest. Um, any more questions? Anyone have any more questions? The remaining 15 yeah, people. I said, you know, yeah. As Karina has Karina's pointed out as well, you know, our community Slack channel is there on oh, the yeah. community Slack channel. So, you know, any, any technical questions, there's a lot, of, a lot of help in that community and, you know, tag me in that yeah. community as well with any specific questions as well to... To come back on any any technical points, or um, and I'm yeah. sure we'll have follow, yeah. follow up with everybody and, and give everybody a, an opportunity to to have a deeper dive if they want and, and ask more specific questions directly. 
yeah exactly yeah i think um we're going to follow up with everybody sort of um yeah post call so um yeah if you need any uh, information on uh, any of the technicals or uh, pricing anything like that then um you know we'll reach out to you and we can uh, set up a, a follow up session uh, and discuss in uh, yeah in more detail but um i suppose other than that um all that's left is to thank everybody for joining and i uh, hope you enjoyed our first uh, a mere webinar um yeah anything from you phil or no i yeah. I, I think we're good that was a great session enjoyed it yeah yeah hopefully it all went all went well looking forward to the next one so hopefully i think this is going to be a, a monthly slot so yeah just um sign up to these every month and uh they're just going to get better and better and hopefully um yeah we'll get more and more people on them and uh make them yeah and more interactive and yeah to keep asking the questions but uh yeah, yeah. okay great stuff thanks Thank everybody thanks for joining and um we'll talk to you all very soon thank you adios bye thank you bye-bye